for your the NRP so I figured I make a video so you guys can just watch this anytime you want and on your own pace and practice within your group so you have to prepare on every role and those role there's five different roles that you could be you could be either the compressor it's backwards um, respiratory which is airway um, the medication person the lead person and the recorder and what I want you to basically practice as a group is what each of those person responsibilities so let's say you got the job as the compressor what do I do where do I stand and stuff like that okay but first things first when you get in uh, ready for to do your um, hands-on we're guys get we're gonna give you a scenario okay and the scenario let's say I'm just gonna make it up say a, a preemie case where um, the mom is or are already getting a c-section and the, um, the NICU team is called to prepare on the bedside to make sure that everything's good to go so once you're in there the baby is still delivering, the baby's not out yet. So first thing you need to do is A, prepare for the equipment that you need. So when you prepare, you have about at least four stations that you need to make sure that is good to go. So, so you need to make sure that you got your intubation kit. Okay. The next one is the UVC kit. Okay. List. Make sure that A, you got your Make sure that you got your um, okay. that you got your endotracheal tube. Please prepare a 2.0 or 2.5, 3.0 or 3.5, like four different types if you could. Uh, if you have a preemie and you know you're gonna have a preemie, at least uh, 2.5 is ready. If you have um, a term, at least um, um, a 3.0 to above is ready. So make sure you get your two. Next is your stylet. So that's the second. Number three is make sure you got your laryngoscope with the blade, Miller. Um, for a premier term, I would like at least get the, the zero size. I tried both of them and they both fit. And so this is like the perfect one for the mannequins that we have. But in real life, Double O is fine as well with the uh, premise. Next is the, the Neo T that we have, but that should already be set in the bed. So just make sure that you know where it's at. Oh, if you need to do a blow by oxygen, you could use this as a blow by because it's blowing up oxygen. Next is your uh, auto supplies already in your endotracheal tube holder right ETT. size so my ETT holder is ready to go okay next will be a tape to secure that near bar you don't need this big old tape just make sure you have at least cut that in half see how like so, as big as my hand and then cut it like this that's all you need one of this that's it you don't need too much okay and that will be, um, if this is the tube, that will be holding the um, right here, around. I'm gonna tape it around right there, okay? I don't wanna tape it yet. Okay, next is um, make sure you get your stethoscope. And if it's a case where it's a um, baby that is suspected with meconium aspiration because they're like 42 weaker already make sure you have your meconium aspirator i don't have that with me but it's the one that looks like an et tube last but not the least you might need a um oropharyngeal airway all right 
so one of these okay make sure it's the right size for your preemie and or the right size for the term baby okay my next thing is to make sure that my ubc kit is ready to go i'm gonna open it up make sure that um this umbilical catheter is out and ready and make sure you have it right there okay and uh, what you could do is just kind of leave it ready to go like just in the container for it's still kind of clean so you just kind of leave it down like this ready to go next thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna check is um my flow meter on and is my suction and uh, my vacuum on so make sure you get your vacuum in okay and you're gonna um put your finger in here oh make sure that put your finger in here to make sure that it's between 80 to 100 uh, negative 80 to negative 100 you don't want to go too much of that and then next make sure that your um your neo t is connected to the uh, oxygen and is on 10 liters okay 10 liters so uh, vacuum next is your warmer okay so what you want to do with your warmer make sure you got the power i i disconnected it but i wanted to point like what the button the power on and the light on okay but um, make sure that the temperature is all the way down to zero. Put it on manual, and then when it says ready, toggle it down to zero, and it should be good because we don't want the real heat on. It will melt the mannequin. Next in the warmer is the blender. Make sure it's on 21% to start with. And we're going to pretend we're using this suction, so make sure it's on. on. Okay? That's for the um warmer not that's on the top part next thing is in the bottom part before you receive the baby make sure you have your walls down so it doesn't the baby doesn't bump into the wall this one can go lift up oops and slide down same thing with this lift up and down okay also the angle on this corner, I don't, I don't know if you notice, it's already perfectly um, leveled. If you want to change the level for some reason, it's um, it's right here. You go ahead and lift it up and turn left or right, however you want the um, le level to be. To put it back, pull, pull the knob and just release. A another thing is the height. I don't know if you remember where it is, but down there, there is a uh, pedal that goes, um, the, um, that has an up and a down uh, lever, so you can bring up the warmer or lower depending on your height. So again, you got the table, check, the flow meter, check, warmer, check. One you got to make sure you got all your monitoring on. Got to make sure you have your ECG monitor leads. You guys will not need the ETCO2 for this scenario. That's for adult. But make sure you also have your pulse ox lead that is going to be connected to this. Now, you got your equipment. You need your the, the, um, the equipment, the, the hardware. But now you need the pieces of equipment. So your A, B, and C. You get your airway ready to go. Um, part of the airway is listening to the airway, so you gotta make sure you get your stethoscope, okay? Um, if it's a preemie case, make sure you have your turkey bag, okay? Blanket to wipe the baby. For that, now with the airway, gotta clear the airway. Make sure you get your bulb suction, um, your mask for the Neo T in the Neo T itself. Gotta check your pressures, five a peep for the CPAP. And if you need to do a PPV, make sure you have a good pressure between 20 to 25 to start. But the most important thing 
is your chest rice. That's what you're looking for, the chest rice. So I'm gonna put this bag down. And um, what I'm going to do is basically go over step by step on each of the person's responsibility. So I'm gonna start with uh, the medicine person, I think. So the medicine person will stand to the other side of the monitor. I'm the medication person. Medication. They said baby's out. I'm going to receive the baby. Ooh, heavy. And I'll put the baby in the warmer. Okay? Let me turn it. In the warmer. So, now... As the medication person, I'm set. Again, receive the baby, put in the baby. table. I gotta start measuring the baby's midline all the way to their ear and see what size new bar I need. So I want me and um, your teacher will wanna see you guys like check out the length and then pull out the right size. Done. And then my next job will be um to assist with intubation and when when the um airway person said i'm ready um go ahead and hand them the laryngoscope and it's it should be already on make sure you clip it on so you're going to assist with the intubation to assist it's this the airway person will say give me my laryngoscope clip it open give it to them and then I'm ready for the tube. You give them the tube. And then the airway person will say, okay, I'm in. As the, uh, as the medication person, you will pull this out. Okay. And then you um, will put the end title. End title. Oh, the one with the blue one. Okay. The end title. Okay. And then you put the Neo T. the neo t um the compressor person will listen to both breath sound you're gonna check if the collar is good now my job um will be to secure it you secure it and then you tape it okay ready to go and then when they're ready um once the um compressor moves to the head to give room for the uvc insertion all you have to do is Grab, what you need to do is grab the umbilical cord. Um, technically, you're supposed to use a forcep to put it in, but we're not going to be technical on that. Um, you could just put it on the venous part, which is the blue one. Put it in and just say, okay, UVC is in, okay? And then the doctor will say, all right, I need you to put 0.15 ml of epinephrine. So you're like, okay, I'm pulling 0.15 ml of epinephrine. You don't have to like break the whole thing, but you can just pretend. All right, 0.15 epinephrine is in. So that's the closed loop communication, okay? And that's the job of the medicine person, really. So receive the baby, prep the ETT kit, uh, assist on the ETT um, uh, insertion, prep the UVC, put the UVC in, give the epi. That's it for the medication. Cool. Next, we're going to go with the compressor person. Compressor person, okay? So the compressor person will stand right there by the monitor, okay? So, if I'm the compressor, my job, first things first, is when they say, okay, baby's out, I have to press the up guard timer. And then, my next job will be, hold on, let me extend this. My next job is to um, stimulate the baby, wipe, 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 wipe the baby off, wipe the blood away from it. And if it's a preemie, I put him on the turkey bag, okay? So, let's say we warmed it up. 
It's a creamy. It's on a bag. Okay. All right. Next thing, I my job will be is that once 30 seconds had passed and the heart rate is still below 100, your airway person is going to start giving breaths, right? Once this happens, your job as the compressor is to put the leads on. So, hold on. So I have to get the leads right here, okay? The leads are right here. And you're gonna put it according to, see it says left arm or LA, left leg or LL, right arm or RA, okay? So right arm. Left arm and left leg. Okay. Cool. So you see how it's on? I close it. And then the next thing I have to do is to connect um, the pulse ox. So right radio. Um, so I have to also connect the pulse ox. Boom. Let's pretend it's already on. I don't want to remove the strip. So pulse ox is on and make sure that you connect the tip right here or else it won't work. Once I see you apply this, you will see the monitor change. Okay? You will have um, reading. Okay? So once I have the leads on, it's when the airway person is doing PPV. When they start doing, when the airway person start going, okay, I'm ready to intubate. My next job as the compressor um, is to use my stethoscope and listen. After the intubation, they say, okay, I'm in. Then I go listen. Then I'll say, all right, I hear bilateral breath sounds. Okay. And then if the case is heart rate still let's say below 60 then the lead can say okay let's start compression when they say let's start compression first things first that you want to do as the compressor is bring this up to a hundred percent and start doing your compression and if you remember the beat is um one and two and three and then the breath okay let's see so remember do not use your nail because it will make a hole in here. Please use this part of your thumb, not the nail. So right here, two thumbs. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. Okay? Um, the next thing is um, uh, the umbilical cord being placed. So when they say I'm ready for the umbilical cord, the compressor from here have to move by the head and do compressions backwards, okay? To allow room for the UVC insertion. So you do backwards. So let's summarize it. My job is when they say baby's out, you click the, click the up guard timer on. Next is after the uh, peep, once the PPV starts, you put the leads and the pulse ox. After intubation, you confirm by listening with your stethoscope. And then if the heart rate is still below 60, you start compression. One and two and three and breathe, okay? One and two and three and breathe, okay? And then when the UVC is ready to be put, you move at the head and you start compressing upside down. One and two and three and breathe, okay? And that's your job. Once the heart rate goes above 60, you stop compression. I will take your stethoscope one more time and go ahead and listen again. Since you have the stethoscope power, feel free to do that. Okay, that's for the compressor. Last but not the least, I'm gonna switch my um, role from a compressor to the airway. And I'm gonna call the airway person respiratory. 
respiratory airway. Okay, now my job, this is my job. Once we receive the baby, okay, receive the baby. Let me take this off real quick. Okay, once you receive the baby, stimulate as well. And once the blanket, once the blanket is all soaked, you carry the baby up from the back of the neck and in the butt you lift it up okay and the compressor have to remove that wet blanket so you can lay him down the next clean blanket until you get to the plastic part if it's a preemie if not then you don't need plastic okay and then 30 seconds have passed let's say heart rate still below 100 my job is to do the ppv first things first i need to do Okay, is to make sure I got a good CPAP on. And then I'm gonna give them a few breaths. Breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three. Do, do I see good chest rise? Yeah, I do. Good? So, I'll give about three of that. And then I'm gonna say, all right, I don't see heart rate increasing. I'm gonna do Mr. Sopa. I'm adjusting the mask. I'm repositioning the neck. I'm suctioning them out okay and increase a little bit of pressure breathe two three breathe two three and this is where you're probably going to need to put an artificial airway okay artificial airway goes sideways or backwards and then you flip it and you again do breathe two three breathe two three breathe two three okay 30 seconds of PPV, heart rate still um, below 100. So, uh, I'm ready to intubate. So they're gonna give me the laryngoscope. I have to take this out, put it in, go in. It's, hold on, I go in. And you see this part, groove. This is where you will, you will use this as a guide to stick your ET tube. See this? You will use it to guide your ET tube in. So, I see the hole, I'm going in, and I say, okay, I'm in. The person will pull it out while I'm still holding it. Do not let go of your tube. Do not let go with that hand until they secured it with a neo bar. Keep your hand in, okay? So, they will give you the my job is to make sure that thing doesn't come up. They're gonna give you the CO2. So go ahead and put it in. And then she's gonna, your medication person will help you. Then give this. And then you give a few breaths. Breathe two, three, breathe two, three. And your compressor person is listening. Breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three. Okay? And if the heart rate's Below 60, I or the lead would say, okay, let's start CPR. So um, this is all I'm doing. Um, I'm coordinating with my compressor. Now the, the beat from read to three, breed through three will change to one and two and three and breed, one and two and three and breed, one and two and three and breed. Remember, you want good chest rise. One and two and three and breed. Okay. And while I'm doing this, I might need to make room for the neo bar placement. So I can move my hand like maybe like away from the nose or something to like make room for my medication person to put that to put the neo bar in. So I gotta I could like move a little bit while I keep hold of the tube. I do not let go of the ET tube. So they're fixing it in the back like so taping it while I still have a good control of the tube. Got it? All right. So once, let's say, the um, the compressor move this way, so they're like standing here, I could just scoot a little bit this way and you guys can work together, figure out how the way you want to circle your hand around. Um, I normally would just let them go over the um, Neo T but figure out how you could get in with your hand around without stopping what you're doing, okay? 
or effectively at least doing what you have to do. So once the heart rate goes above 60, the compressor has to stop and I continue my job as an airway, but I changed my beat again from one and two and three and breathe. I go back to breathe two, three, breathe two, three, okay? So you have two beats, either breathe two, three, breathe two, three, and then with a the compressor, it's one and two and three and breathe, one and two and three and breathe, okay? That's it. So the job of the lead is that person telling what's happening before it happens. So for example, the baby is received, I am the lead, I'm saying, okay, let's go ahead and warm stimulate. 20 seconds into it, I notice the baby's still purple. I'll say, okay, we're about 20 seconds into it. In about five seconds, let's go ahead and start PPV. Something like that. Give them, give your team a warning what's happening next. All right, so let's say your airway person start doing PPV. The lead can go go ahead and put the leads on, pulse socks on. I want to see what they got. And make sure, go ahead and listen to the um, breath sounds. And while we're at it, medication person, okay, go ahead and... Uh, prepared the ET tube, uh, ETT kit for me, intubation kit, just in case. And then PPV 30 seconds. Okay, well, heart rate still low. Let's go ahead and intubate. And then let's say intubation's in. Um, let's go ahead and start CPR. Make sure we give 100% on the FiO2 and let's start CPR. And then they start CPR, a minute into CPR. Um, let's go ahead and switch position. Person, go ahead and prepare the UVC. Uh, so intubate already, CPR. Okay, so prepare the UVC. Once the CPR has been happening for one minute, uh, make sure CPR, so make room for the UVC insertion. The person put UVC. Uh, and then I'll say, okay, please um, give epinephrine through UVC. That medication person will be giving, um, you should, uh, giving of epinephrine, giving, flush, good. And then I'm watching the monitor while this is happening. So basically as a lead, I'm conducting the dance. I'm letting them know this is what's gonna happen next. This is what I need from you, from you or from you before it happens. If they forgot, if your lead forgot what to do, it's okay for your team to like remind them, like doc, do you want me to do this? How about this? Should we start doing that? Communicate, make sure you got good um, close loop of communication if something doesn't feel right. You're like, are you sure you want this? Just to make sure, um, just to double check. And so make sure that the patient receives the best care they got. Now your recorder will be standing right here. And their job is to watch that APGAR timer. So let's say they receive the baby. Um, you can write zero, zero minutes, receive baby. And then the next one will be uh, 30 seconds, like see what time they have, like 30 or 32. It could be 35 seconds before they start PPV. Let's say 35, PPV started with mask, uh, 21%. Oh, okay, I noticed after a minute 45, see, uh, intubated. Um, and then you could ask, you could ask the you could ask the medication person, what size tube do we have? Intubated, okay, 3.5 um, ETT. Okay, a compression at two and 30 seconds, stuff like that. They need to write the time and what happened to it. So when you're done, um, the baby is good, uh, heart rate's above 100. Um, somebody okay, let me call transport to NICU, then usually the scenario will end from there. And then we'll do debriefing. When we do debriefing, that's when the recorder's job is the most important because then we're gonna go back as the recorder, what time did we do this? When did they give this? Things like that. It's now up to like what the recorder has written, okay? All right, that's it folks. Hopefully it helps again. Bye.